Hi, I'm Adrito, and these are the reasons why you should study mathematics at university. In this video, I'll be talking about what would make you a good mathematics student, the topics you will cover in a standard mathematics undergraduate degree, your career prospects after, and just some personal thoughts. For context, I studied my undergraduate degree in mathematics from the University of Cambridge, although I switched to physics for my master's, and now I'm doing a PhD in artificial intelligence applied to neurosurgery. Mathematics at university is quite different to mathematics before university, particularly if you're following the UK A-level syllabus. But books like The Mars Last Theorem by Simon Singh or The Music of the Primes by Marcus du Soitoy are very good insights and introductions to what a mathematical career can bring you. And of course, YouTube channels like Numberphile are also really, really good to view as well. Let's take the harmonic series 1 over n as an example, where n is any positive integer. So the first term of the series is 1, the second is a half, the third is a third, the fourth is a quarter, etc, etc. And then you get to 1 over a million, 1 over a billion, 1 over a trillion, 1 over any arbitrary large number. And as you can tell, each term in this sequence is less than the previous term and eventually once you get to infinity or that that's not the correct terminology but you get what I mean it will converge to 1 over infinity which is 0. However if you take the sum so 1 plus a half plus a third plus a quarter plus a fifth plus a sixth one plus blah 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 plus 1 over a million plus 1 over a billion plus 1 over a trillion even though each term is getting closer and closer to 0 the actual sum of these values diverges off to infinity. And that's just an incredible fact. There are loads of proofs for it. Some are with term comparisons to other series. Some use the integration of 1 over x being log of x, which diverges. But regardless of the proof, if you are interested at all in looking up the proof after you watch this video, of course, then maths is the subject for you. It's just, just such an incredible fact that such a simple thing converges in one way, but the sum diverges. Moving on to what you actually study, there are four big topics in an undergraduate degree. The biggest of this is pure mathematics, then you have mathematical methods, mathematical physics, and mathematical statistics. Pure mathematics is the core of any undergraduate degree and concerns itself with the proofs and underlying truths of mathematics. For example, you have number theory where you play around with infinities and the real numbers, or groups where you see the underlying structure and symmetries of various objects. And then you have real analysis which concerns itself with continuity of functions and what it means for a function to be differentiable or integrable. Then in later years you will see topology and rings and modules and really interesting, more abstract concepts. Mathematical methods gives you the tools of solving various equations, whether that be differential equations or a set of differential equations or a set of linear equations using matrices or trying to integrate things in the real plane but using complex numbers. Many of these methods will be useful in solving equations in mathematical physics where you'll be learning about, well, physics, but taking a more theoretical approach than if you're doing a pure physics degree. You'll be learning about the movement of human-sized objects in Newtonian mechanics, or microscopic objects in quantum mechanics, or macroscopic objects in general relativity, and then you'll be learning things like Maxwell's equations, which is to do with electromagnetism, and just wave-particle duality, and perhaps quantum field theory, if you take that to an advanced enough level. It's just really fun, interesting things about the natural world that we live in, but taking a more theoretical approach in the sense that you'd be going over the equations rather than perhaps the physical interpretations. Finally, mathematical statistics covers classical probability, Bayesian probability, statistics as a whole, and then in later years, perhaps stochastic calculus, which is used in financial modeling. In terms of career perspective, mathematics is brilliant. You can do a master's in almost any related field, whether that is in pure mathematics or if you want to switch to physics or economics or computer science. And in terms of the actual real world jobs, you'll be competing against other people who have STEM degrees. And in this way, mathematics doesn't really advantage you in any way, but it's a way of thinking that most people in STEM subjects do. But the difference with maths is that you're able to focus on very abstract problems compared to the more practical problems that those subjects offer. I personally switched to astrophysics for my master's, then worked as a quantitative software developer in finance. And now I'm doing a PhD in artificial intelligence applied to medicine. 
but maths gave me the springboard to venture out into all these various related subjects, whether that be natural science or computer science or finance and now a little bits of medicine. It's just incredible. If you understand maths, you can understand so much about the world. And effectively, all these subjects are just mathematics plus flavour. I thoroughly enjoyed studying mathematics as my undergraduate degree, even though at some points it was stupendously hard. There's just something about throwing yourself into an abstract problem where the only friends you have are the symbols on the page. To this day, I say I'm a mathematician at heart, scientist by trading, and computer scientist for money. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, a like would be appreciated, and I'm going to make another video on why you should study physics and then the comparison between maths and physics, so if you want to be notified on that, a subscription would also be gratefully received. Hopefully, I'll see you in the near future.